There was a question in the forums asking whether you are able to connect the Tascam Model 12 with another audio interface. And as you can see in this example, I have the Tascam Model 12 as well as the Behringer FCA 1616 to be able to use both of them together so that you have the 12 inputs from the Model 12 and the, in this case, 8 inputs, analog inputs from the FCA 1616, totaling 20 inputs and about 18 outputs as one device in the Windows system. Of course, it is possible to a certain degree on a Mac system because you can aggregate both devices and it works fine, but in Windows, a little bit trickier. So in this video, I'm going to show you have actually done that and I do have the the things set up and running as well um, let me just switch so I've got 20 tracks all armed for recording and I have recorded um, up to 15 minutes worth of it up to 20 tracks and I had no issues um, whatsoever I had no noise, no things, and I was able to record from the inputs from the Model 12 as well as the inputs from the FCA 1616. The uh, While I had the, the microphone connected to, as you can see now, onto the FCA 1616, I was monitoring and listening to it with a bit of latency using the headphones of the Model 12. So yes, it is possible. So let me show you how my configuration was. Okay, first things first, you gotta have both devices connected before you start anything, making sure they are configured correctly. As you can see at the top, I've got my Behringer FCA 1616 control panel in a USB connection mode, and that's what's right there. And if I look at the synchronization, I've set it 44.1 kilohertz, and you can also go up to 48, but you gotta make sure that both devices have the same sampling rate, okay? And device clock is internal, okay? And then the settings are left it as is. Now with my ASIO buffer, I do have it 512 samples. Of course, this is gonna add some latency, but you better be sure and safe than having lower samples, lower buffer, and come up with some problems. And if we look at the Tascam Model 12 mixer, you can see I left everything as is. It is 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate, so it matches. And the buffer is 128 samples. Again, you can leave it as is because the ASIO for all will change those settings anyway. So once you have both devices connected to your Windows and running smoothly with no problems, then let's go to the next step. I'm going to be testing this with Cakewalk by BandLab because it's a free DAW. You may notice that if you are using the ASIO for all driver, which I have a few videos on that topic of where to get it and how to download and set it up, um, which I will go through it again today. I do have videos. I will leave a link in the description and a card above if I can. It will come up with a message saying that it's not really compatible, but I, with my test that I've just done today, I had no issues with it. But if you do encounter, then um, you might want to choose a different DAW. Now, I expect that you have your Tascam Model 12 as your first and initial and only audio interface connected to your DAW, in this case, Cakewalk. So the first thing we need to do is go and change that and assign it to an ASIO for all driver. The ASIO for all driver will take over the Tascam's driver and communicate between your DAW and the hardware of Model 12. Let's go into Preferences before we open any project. Under Audio Devices, you can see I have Model 12, ASIO in 1 to 12, right there, and the outputs as well. The first thing we got to do is 
disconnected from our module 12, the inputs, as well as the outputs. As you can see now, we have every other available interface possible. You can see I've got FCA 1616 available and a few other drivers as well. So once we've done that, don't select anything and the click apply button. Now Cakewalk has no audio device, hardware device to talk to because we have not selected anything. And it is important that you deselect everything and click the apply button before you start selecting the ASIO drivers. So let's set up ASIO for all driver. One thing I should mention here, you can actually see ASIO for all and it says model 12, 4, 1 and so on. You can see few FSI, uh, ASIO for all drivers. That's because I previously set it up and run and tested it before I did this demo. So you may not see this. So I'm just going to select the first one as input and the first one as the output. And now I'm going to click apply. In your case, most likely when you install ASIO for all for the first time, it will default to your PC's audio output and microphone input as such. So if you are using laptop, like this example I'm using on my laptop, it will initially have it on the laptop. So I'm going to click apply. Once it's applied, I'm going to go to driver settings and see it selected ASIO for all, input and output for master timing. I'm going to go to ASIO panel, I'm going to click there. This opens up my ASIO driver settings. Yours may look like this. And yours, before my modification, may also look, that is my laptop's audio and microphone input and output. And if you click this uh, icon here, advanced option, you should be able to see all the different audio devices and their inputs and outputs available. You can click these arrows. As you can see, it does recognize model 12. It does recognize my FCA 1616. It does recognize, however, it will not allow me to use my Yamaha AG03. That is because that's the interface I'm using to video capture the screen. So if you see it this way, that's what would default to. If I click close and apply, now this what it may have looked like when you first installed ASIO for all. With just audio microphone input and headphone speaker output if you are using a laptop. So we go back to, if that was the case, let's continue. We go back to ASIO for all and open the panel. I just wanted to go through that lengthy explanation. So just in case you have a different configuration, you know where you are, you know how things are. So here, I'm um, now I'm going to select model 12 by clicking this icon right here. It turns white for me. I can disable my high definition. Then I'm going to click my Behringer FCA 1616 and enable that as well. I'm going to leave the ASIO buffer to 512 I know that's going to add lots of latency, but as I mentioned, I better have latency than and safety with no data corruption rather than having low latency. And if I click the plus buttons next to them, that should open up. It says 10 outputs and 12 inputs. And they are enabled. That's important. And again, on the plus sign, you can see I've got my microphone, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight inputs. I have disabled my ADAT input, and if I did enable, that will add another 8. So that means I can record 28 inputs, and I could have extra 8 outputs by the ADAT. But I don't have anything connected, so I've let it off. A lot of audio interfaces, unlike the FCA 1616, may only have 8 inputs and 8 outputs, or even less. So make sure that all the inputs are turned on and available. 
we close that. Now we go back into devices. I'm going to disable this again and click apply. Now I know I may have gone a few extra steps, might have confused you, only because to show you that if you are at a different state and the ASIO for all by default is selecting your um, default audio interface, then you know where you are and now you can continue from there. And as you can see now, my ASIO for all changed into model 12. and the FCA 1616 and they're the only ones available at the moment so now I can go ahead and select all of these available inputs both from the model 12 and the FCA 1616 and the same goes with the outputs all done and I'm going to click apply there we go now I have 20 inputs and 18 outputs just going to close that let me open my previous project that I've tested already. Okay, project now open that I've previously recorded. And you can see if I zoom in, I've recorded some of the tracks and they're all on for recording as well. And if we look into our inputs, this is my track one. And I can select all these inputs now from my model 12 then the FCA 1616 and up to as you can see up to 20 whether uh, that whether mono one and two left and right or stereo inputs because in cakewalk the inputs determine whether the recording is a mono or stereo track and you can see they go all the way up to 20 inputs and for the outputs, of course, I can either go to the master or I can go physical outputs as well. You can see I've got 18 outputs. So I can send my microphone from model 12 to the outputs of, let's say, the stereo outputs of uh, 5 and 6 on my FCA 1616. So that will route the audio through cakewalk with latency if you if you needed to or even to FCA 1616's output and for my master of course I've got my master on 9 and 10 that way I can use the stereo fader of uh, on my model 12 as 9 and 10 as sort of playback on on the mixer I hope that helps that explain um, how it's all set up and as you can see it had no issues recording or at the same time simultaneously 20 tracks that's the all of the analog inputs that I have available uh, to record again I should mention that ASIO for all is not 100% reliable so do take care so if you do have issues just increase the buffer if, you're, if you don't need direct monitoring, because you can still plug in your headphone on either device. So if you have a microphone being recorded on the Model 12, you can directly monitor through the headphone of Model 12. But if you are recording any input from the FCA 1616 or the other audio interface that you are trying to incorporate with, you can plug into the headphone output of that one and select direct monitoring and li listen direct monitoring that way. So increase the buffer, because the more buffer you have, the less chance of any data corruption and noise that will happen as you are recording for a length of time. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. If these kind of videos is something interest you, feel free to subscribe to my channel as well. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one.